What, um, this is kind of a follow-up. So this person wants to know about the more non-miraculous mm. gifts of the Holy Spirit and how do they know if they are gifts of the Holy Spirit mm. versus things that they've learned over time from their walk with, the, with God, like their God-given experiences or talents, um, like helps, administration, generosity. Should they be concerned with labeling that or mm. how do they know whether it's a God-given gift or if it's... Um, a gift of the Holy Spirit. I, I wouldn't be concerned about labels, uh, except it might cause confusion. Like that, the gifts of administration helps, teaching, that sort of thing. Uh, they're not given the name charisma. Uh, it's only the, the charismatic gifts that he calls charisma. Mm -hmm. And those are supernatural impartations. Um, the, the other gifts are no less of God. They just are, they, they come through different means. So, uh, whether God's given to you in the moment or whether God gave it to you as part of your basic constitution. You know, you're wired that way. doesn't matter. It's a God-given gift. And the important thing is that you're aware of that gift and that you're using it for the purposes of uh, building up the body and furthering ministry. Hmm. But generally speaking, the, the, the gifts in the other three lists tend to be ones that are more a function of our personality or our experience, you know, those kind of things. You just are that kind of person. And so you offer yourself along with your gift, up to the church uh, to be used. I think even that can get a little tricky sometimes. Because Don't you disagree with me? I'm going no, to right now. Don't right you now. dare. <laughs> I rebuke you. <laughs> There's times that things you'd say would be, oh, that's just a naturally wired sort of thing. For you know, mentioned administration or leadership, let's say. Or, I mean, I, I know you know someone who uh, learned guitar Supernaturally, right? Like, That's true. Right? Yeah. I think of... Danny Churchill plays up here sometimes. Wow. Yeah. We went on retreat, came back. He says, you guys won't believe this, but some people, I, I, a person in our youth group got like a word, you're supposed to be able to play guitar, I prayed for him, and they picked up and started playing guitar, and it was absolutely incredible. It was, it was like yeah. uh, unbelievable. Now you might th think someone's either practiced or someone is just a mutant, but not Danny. It's just, it came it just in came a prayer. Out. He just had there. Yeah, he never um, played before. I even think of... You know, I, I think I have the gift of teaching, but when I think about that, you know, that sounds like, oh, well, you just, you know, you're wired, you like to be in front of people and talk, and, you know, you just, whatever. It's like, no, no, you don't know. <laughs> I, I spent the first 25 years of my life ensuring I would never speak in front of anybody. I got through Bethel College, I was supposed to have a speech class, and somehow I just, I didn't do it, but I finagled, I hated that, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, I, I back with Jesus, and this thing happens to me in over a year, period of a year where I can't talk about anything else in front of about people, but as soon as it's about things of, of God, not only can I, I feel like I have to. And so for me, yeah, okay. what would seem to be a naturally wired thing was just out of the blue and it's not me at all. So it's, it's I think, even if it seems sort of like, well, that's just a natural thing, God can come and infuse that or even produce it where it wasn't there before. It's certainly this guy got sense of humor. So you spent the first 25 years of your life staying away from any kind of being in front of people. I spent the first 18 stuttering like crazy. You yeah. know, we're both public speakers. <laughs> True. <laughs> there is a God, folks. This is real. 